Hey everyone, welcome to another video. This video is gonna be about the brands that I wanted to try for 2021 and I'm gonna be telling you if I actually did. So let's get right into it. So about a year ago, I did this video where I said which brands I wanted to try for 2021. It was a bunch of brands I was pretty excited about that I was expecting to try and some of them I actually tried and I really tried, but some of them I didn't end up purchasing anything from. So we're just gonna chat about that. Let's start with the first brand. The first brand that I had on my list was Musee Beauty. They changed their name. I'm not sure what their name is right now. Let me just check it. Okay, the name is Kai Love. Kai Love? I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce it, but I was really into the idea of this brand about a year ago. They came out with, I believe, the Van Gogh palette. I really liked it. But soon after that video, soon after I made the video, I was just researching a little bit, thinking, should I try this brand or not? What should I try? And people said that the shimmers were a little bit on the subtle side, that they weren't extremely interesting. And at that moment, I was basically only looking for special shimmery shadows. I was on the hunt for them. At the start of this year, I was like, my goal is to try as many special shades as possible because I felt like I didn't really have a lot of them in my collection, didn't really have a good feel for them. So I decided to put Musee Beauty on the back burner also because it's an American brand. It costs a lot of extra money for me to get it to the Netherlands and I thought I'd rather put that money towards buying some special shimmers. Also, they didn't really do a lot of eyeshadow palettes that caught my eye. I was like, it's nice, it looks nice, but it's not, but it's just not worth it. It's not exactly what I'm looking for. So I decided to skip on them for this year. Don't know if I'm gonna be trying them in the near future. I might just skip on them altogether for now. I feel like I've discovered so many good brands and I'm interested in so many special brands. And I don't know if this brand is gonna come out with something that really, really catches my eye enough for me to actually buy it. So I also don't think that this is gonna go on my list for next year. I will do another video with my list of brands for next year that I wanna try next year. But that's not a video. And we're not gonna be chatting about that too much in this one. So the next brand on my list is actually Menagerie Cosmetics. This is a brand that I tried. I was patiently waiting for them to resume shipping to Europe. And they did, and they had a restock. I believe it was in March or something like that. I don't fully remember. It's been a while since I ordered this, but I ordered a magnetic palette with a bunch of singles. I really wanted to try their singles. I wasn't too interested in their pre-made palettes. I, <laughs> I paid a lot of money for this. These are very special shades, very beautiful shimmers. I like the mattes as well. I will link my video down below. I will also put it in the eye if I remember. But this is a great formula, a very beautiful brand. I really like these, but it was so expensive that I'm kind of like, I don't know if I want to buy from this brand again because shipping was like 30 euros, $35. That's a lot of money. It, and I feel like there are other brands. I've discovered other brands where it's a little bit less expensive to get special shades. And now I also kind of feel like I have the special shades that I wanted because I really, really especially wanted to get Mimic, the shade over here, and then this kind of mid-tone purple to gold, pinky duochrome. That's also the shade that I really wanted. I got those and now I'm like, maybe, maybe later on, but I also feel like I have to use these a little bit more to really justify buying more from an Ashwin. They do come out with pretty color stories, pretty pre-made palettes from time to time. I'm still kind of eyeing the fruit palette. What was that palette called? The purple palette that they come, came out with? I'm still kind of thinking about buying that one, but I feel like with brands like that, there is just this perfect moment to buy where you want a lot of things. They're restocking a lot of things. There's not a lot of other things that you want because it's so expensive. So maybe there will come another perfect time for me to buy this, but... I have enough from this brand for now and I don't really feel like this is gonna be a favorite brand for me or anything like that just because it's so hard to 
get. Then the next brand on my list is actually a brand that I really, really wanted to try, but I didn't end up buying anything, and that's Lunar Beauty. This is a brand I get so excited about, always excited to see their new releases and almost every time they release something I'm like that's so pretty but then in the end I decide not to get it and I don't know why that keeps happening. Especially last year, not that much this year but especially last year every time they came out with something I was really contemplating buying it, thinking about it a lot but in the end I always felt like it wasn't the right time. The eyeshadow palettes are pretty expensive, the cheek products are usually in a palette i don't really want to add a face palette to my collection there's always something that makes me go maybe i should wait for another release and then the bronze or face palette that they came out with i wasn't really a fan of that idea the moonspell volume 2 wasn't really my thing it was a little bit too bright especially for me for this time of year i'm not that into bright shades i don't know what else he came out with this year but at least it wasn't something that really really made me want to buy from him i still really want to try something but also a lot of the things he releases are limited edition and then they come to the netherlands and they are available here for a little bit but then they disappear and I don't really feel like buying from his website. I don't know why. I guess because there is that option and, was kind of, and I'm always kind of waiting for things to come back to European websites. Yeah, I don't really know what it is with this brand. I really want to try it, but every time I'm like, it's not the perfect moment. It's not the perfect release. With me, it just takes a lot of time sometimes to get warmed up to a brand. And then when I buy something and I really love it, I can really go from zero to a hundred and then want to by everything so i kind of feel like it's the same with this brand if i would try something and love it i would probably just buy all the new releases but it just it just didn't happen this year it just just wasn't the right time the right moment not the right releases I feel like if he would release something like the Strawberry Dream right now, I would probably buy it. I feel like I've waited a bit too long with some things, not really realizing that it was limited edition. So yeah, it's still a brand that I'm interested in, but it just wasn't this year. And then the next brand that I have on my list is actually Hourglass. This is a brand that I've been eyeing for quite some time. And I've been eyeing a very specific product. And I actually had this specific product in my mind when I made this list of brands. And I bought it. So I bought the Ambient Lighting Blush in the shade Sublime Flush. So this shade, I believe I saw it on Ellie Klein's channel. But this is kind of like a warm pink mixed with a cool toned kind of lilac -y shine. Like a lilac -y glow. And I really... I think this is a beautiful blush. I really like it. It's a very interesting shade, very beautiful formula. Before this blush, I never spent a lot of money on cheek products. I thought 20 euros was already so, so much. I didn't really want to spend more than that. And then this year, after I bought this, I was like, okay, this is what we're doing from now. Apparently, apparently it's not that big a deal if I pay 40 euros for a blush. So I bought some more luxury and expensive products after this. This was kind of the beginning of my luxury journey, buying some luxury here and there. I really enjoy this product. I don't know if I really want to buy more from this brand because I feel like this is really the most interesting thing that they have for me. I'm also always eyeing their cheek palettes that they have for the holidays but in the end I always feel like it's a bit too expensive and there, there's always something that I wouldn't really use and, I, and then I'd rather just buy a single that I would really love. One thing that I've been eyeing a little bit is a bronzer from them, a baked bronzer but I don't know if that's something that I really need or i'm gonna buy i don't want to spend too much money on luxury product at this point in my life but at least i really liked what i tried so far it's not a brand i think that i'm gonna be buying a lot from next up on the list we have a charlotte tilbury some of these brands actually surprised me some of these brands i completely forgotten about that i wanted to try them this year like in the first few months i was aware of this list and then i kind of forgot about it so i kind of had other brands in mind than i actually had on my list but apparently Charlotte Tilbury was one. I bought one product. This is the Glow Gasm Beauty Light Wand in Pink Gasm. I really like it. I really just wanted to try this kind of glowy bronzy pink product because I was really into 
cream cheeks this year i was really into glowy cheeks and also very into bronzy cheeks which is all completely different than what i thought this year was gonna be because i never used creams before this year i wasn't that into bronziness and i wasn't that much into glowiness i did like highlighters but the bronzers and the blushes that i used before this year were all pretty matte so i'm actually pretty surprised that this is what i eventually tried from the brand what i tried from the brand in the end but i'm really happy with this purchase i think it's a really beautiful product i think it is worth the hype i haven't really found something that is that close we do have kind of like a kiko milano dupe i believe those are the glam cushion highlighters but those colors aren't the same they are very similar in like vibe and shininess but they are not similar colors so for me it was still worth it to buy this one i think i had something else in mind when i put this brand on the list i was thinking more about eyeshadows but but I haven't tried any eyeshadows. I just think that the eyeshadows by Charlotte Tilbury are so expensive. And I don't know if it's gonna be worth it. I don't know where to begin. I don't know what to try. It's just like... 50 euros for four eyeshadows i don't know i don't know if i should do that maybe at some point in my life i will feel ready to spend that much on an eyeshadow palette but for now i think i'm just gonna be keeping it to this one i'm really surprised that i had all these luxury brands on my list i didn't realize that that was the case and i really didn't think about it when i bought that beauty light one so we have two brands left the next brand is actually lethal cosmetics and i made an order from them pretty early in the year i believe i was eyeing a lot of eyeshadows i was playing with the eyeshadow designer like the empty palette builder that they have on their website i was just playing around with that and just choosing a bunch of shades i believe they had a sale when i bought this i i believe it was like 40 percent off i will also link the video down below where i tried lethal cosmetics at this point all these single eyeshadows are like scattered throughout my palette so i just grabbed one of the palettes that i that i have some lethal singles in but i also have a few other shimmers in here but in the end i really like the mattes they are good not my absolute favorite but they are very nice but the shimmers are a little bit too soft for me and sometimes a little bit too dry i haven't tried a lot of shimmers i didn't order a lot of shimmers because i had heard that they were a little bit lackluster so i don't have a lot of different shimmers to compare and to really say what it's about but the shimmers that i tried i didn't think were very interesting but i do love the mattes so this is not a brand that is gonna be like my absolute favorite because i just love special shimmers especially after this year and trying so many other things things but i still really like them but that's also kind of because they are so close to me they are basically right next door because i'm in the netherlands i can get them pretty fast shipping is still pretty high the shipping is as expensive as some brands in the u.s but at least i don't have to pay customs so that's a good thing but i think the reason that i was most interested in them and the reason i'm still kind of interested in them is because they are a german brand is because they are a european brand and i just love buying from european brands it's just a good experience most of the time so i'm happy that i tried them and what i discovered is basically what i expected i'm glad to have these shades in my collection and i do get excited whenever they release something new but i don't end up buying things so it's a nice brand i like the brand i like the vibes but there are other brands I discovered this year that I'm just a little bit more into. And one of those brands is Glamlight. This is a brand that was on my list. I really wanted to try them. I was so... I was so into this brand i've been watching a lot of videos and at the start of the year i finally was like okay let me just go and grab the ice cream dream palette and that started it all so this palette i've been raving about i love the shades in here i love the shimmers there are such beautiful textures in here as well but these shimmers aren't like those very see-through very shimmery without a lot of base shimmers these, these are very like 
thick and creamy and that is something that I really love. I've done so many looks with this palette. I've also done a lot of neutral looks with this palette. I've talked about this one so, so much. Since I tried it basically, since I reviewed it, I've been so into this palette. And after I tried this, I was like, I want to try more because this is really my type of shimmer formula. This is really what I love to wear. So I also got the Red Velvet Cupcake palette and I recently also got and did a video on the new Happy Hour collection. I got the Dirty Martini and I got the Chocolate Martini and I'm just especially into their eyeshadows. Every time they come out with something eyeshadow related, I'm like, okay, I'm interested. Let me know what's the deal. They are also pretty easy for me to get here in the Netherlands. There's a web shop called Boozy Shop where they usually come to with their new products. It does take some time for the products to get there, but it's like if I would order it from the US, the products would get to me at the same time they would be available at that web shop. And the web shop has like next day delivery. So in the end, it doesn't take more time to wait for it and then order it in the Netherlands. So that also makes this a really interesting brand for me and a brand that I really want to buy from because it's pretty easy to get. It just have to be a little bit patient. I just love the formula. I just love the quality and the vibes. When they did all this pizza and burger burger and taco pellets. I was like mm, a little bit too savory food themed for me. It wasn't really my style but these more cutesy dessert themed palette I'm really into. So I'm actually really happy that I tried this brand. Really excited to even use more by this brand. This is one of the brands that I had on my list that actually impressed me the most. Yeah, Glamlight definitely is one of my favorite brands right now. I'm so happy that I tried them. Now I kind of wanted to do an honorable mention because I was under the impression I had the idea in my mind that Odin's Eye was on this list and when I checked back on the video I was like where is Odin's Eye? What happened? How did I not put that on the list? But at the moment I made that list they didn't have a lot of palettes that were to my taste that I was really into before this year. They didn't really do color stories that spoke to me a lot but then they came out with the Norns eyeshadow palette with the Norns collection and I was like wow. Well not right away not right away because at first I was like that's an interesting color story. I thought it looked a little bit like the Club Nebula palette in some ways. I didn't know if it was going to be different enough. And also this is a little bit of a challenging color story you could say because it's not that clear what you can do with this palette but the shades in here are gorgeous. So when I first saw this I was like that's probably not gonna be the palette for me. But then I saw a lot of videos. I saw some beautiful looks, some beautiful teal looks different things and I was like okay you know what I think it is time to try some Odin's Eye and I made my first Odin's Eye order and I was blown away I loved everything I love this eyeshadow palette I raved and raved and raved and raved about it I was so into it and after that I bought like everything they came out with the Giant Wolves palette. I bought all the palettes in this collection. The Saga Freya palette. I only bought this bigger palette but I really loved it. So I guess this is kind of like the brand of 2021 for me. This is like the award for most exciting best brand according to me is going to Ono's Eye. I really thought that this was on my list but I guess the excitement to try it came a little bit later than I thought but I'm so glad that I tried this brand. This is like I just love to discover amazing beautiful European indie brands and they have such beautiful textures as well. It's like the most easy affordable way for me to get textured eyeshadows, multi-chrome eyeshadows but they also do the theming and the packaging so well. So I just wanted to give a little bit of a shout out to this brand that I thought was on my list but wasn't. I just felt like it deserved to be in this video. So that's gonna be everything for the brands I wanted to try in 2021. Let me know if there's a brand that you've tried this year that really impressed you and that you're really into now. Do you have your own Odin's Eye? Did you discover a new brand that really became your favorite? Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it and don't forget to subscribe and then I'll see you in my next one. Bye bye!